What is up everyone, it is Speed here, and today I got 10 heroes that I recommend you play in patch 7.26a. I've been looking at the recent patch notes on what's good, what's bad, what items should be picked on certain heroes. Also, I'm going to be talking about heroes that I, I didn't mention recently that are either good or have been getting picked by the pros that I didn't mention too recently. So yeah, if you're excited for these 10 heroes, I recommend you like and subscribe, because not only will I be putting out more of these videos in the future, but also the YouTube algorithm is 100% of my boss, and you liking the video helps me out a ton. I also want to ask you guys a very important question. Do you want to know what's going inside the head of a 7k MMR player? Or, you know, things that even 7k MMR players need to improve on. I recently coached a top 15 player, someone who reached top 15. I'm not kidding. Literally top 15. I coached him and I posted that content over on the main Game Leap website. If you want to see what I have to say about his gameplay and how I helped him improve in his Dota adventure, go click the link down below. It's legitimately extremely cheap. I'm not kidding. It's like $8 a month. That's it. You go down below, click the link, and you're going to be able to get a ton of content. I mean, after all, what better do you have to do right now? I personally have nothing better to do besides create more content, and that's exactly what I'll be doing over there. So hopefully you guys check it out. And I'll see you there. All right, so getting to the first hero, we have Alchemist. And I only want to briefly talk about him only because I think this hero before the recent patch was broken, like actually broken, but like uh, not like, you know, like he's broken, bro. He was like broken, broken because he didn't really get affected by the 10% change. In fact, I talk about this on a video over on the Game Leap website, which should come out relatively soon of my thoughts on 7.26 as a whole and how it impacts Dota. But Alk didn't really get affected by it. He was still really good. He still just gained a ton of gold from skeletons and mud golems and all these creeps. And all I want to say in this video briefly about Alchemist is I think he is still good. Once again, I think a lot of the time when heroes get nerfed, there is a major overreaction or even buffed and how good or bad they now are. So when Alchemist got nerfed, I read the numbers, right? Bounty Room Multiplier, pretty significant, 0.5 less at all levels, you know, from four to three on the original number, right? How much gold do you get when you scale the point? And it two less at all level in terms of how it scales. While it matters, it still means that this hero farms unbelievably fast compared to the 10% less of all other heroes, which, you know, 10% is not a massive number, but I think Alchemist still profited from that change. And so, yeah, all I'm saying is give Alchemist a try, feel them out for yourself, and let me know what you guys think. But personally, I think he's going to do very well. Number two on the list is one that I'm very confident is going to be super strong in the upcoming meta. At least I think when people learn how to draft around it, and that is Necrophos. I watched a recent pro match where it seemed very, very strong. And I've even been reading some of your recommendations down in the comment section down below about what you guys think is good on Necro. And someone within the 7.26a patch, I'm sorry, I don't remember your name, but someone recommended that Necro with Vessel is good. Necro with Vessel. And I, I agree. I think this item combination is pretty damn good. Now, the only issue I can see with buying Vessel is that the buildup, while it's fantastic with Urn, and Urn well works very well with Ghost Shroud, as long as you know they have physical damage, you can like Giga Heal yourself with the Urn in your Ghost Shroud, or just use it to finish people off. But most importantly, what I want to say is that it means you're not buying a Dispel, which people are definitely going to be buying, you know, Vessel against you. It means you're not buying a Dispel. It also means you're not buying a Hood or a Mech, and hopefully you're still buying a wand. Like, guys, if you play Necro and don't buy a wand, either your brain is off or you need a new brain. Because wand literally full heals you. I'll move on from the point, though. I definitely like the Vessel buildup. I think it gives you really good laning stage items. A circlet, a ring of protection, the Sage's Mask for mana sustain early on is something Necro actually needs. Then I recommend you buy raindrops, a wand, you know, some power treads. And with this Vessel, you're going to be doing AoE heal reduction as well as lifesteal and regen. And that's huge. Because not only do you have Heartstopper going, but you also have this anti-heal going in an AoE. And basically, people are just going to tick, tick, tick. Add on to your Q damage, and then maybe buy a Radiance, and get, you know, other items later on, such as a Shiva's or a Veil. I really think that Necro's overall AoE damage is going to be quite significant, and something we should look out for in the future. Coming in at number three, we have Beastmaster Jungle! Beastmaster Jungle! <laughs> and talking about Beastmaster Jungle, guys, because I really want you guys... Uh, to pay attention to what I'm about to say. But over on the main Game League website, and no, don't skip, I played a game, a full analysis, all right? I, it was a weird game, weird game. I had a lot of deaths, but I teach you a lot about split pushing, right? So if you're interested in learning how to split push, that video will come out relatively soon. You, all you gotta do is sign up, wait a couple days, it will come out. It is a full analysis. I talk about everything that goes through my head when I'm split pushing. How do I look at the map? How do I identify, you know, what I need to do when people are running at me? Uh, a ton of things. There's so much information that I 
basically don't discuss here on YouTube. So I recommend you click the link down below. But yeah, in, in all seriousness, I actually do like Beastmaster Jungle. You know, you can dislike the video now though. I under, I understand. I'm a bit I'm a bit crazy. It's yeah, I get. It. Coming in at number four is Luna Helm of the Dominator, and uh, shout out to Good Guy. Now I'm not gonna say much more than that because I'm not actually convinced Luna is one of the best carries of the patch. I still think that Terror Blade is very scary for this hero in particular. I think that PL can make Luna. Uh, you know, want to kill herself as well as Naga. So it's a very difficult hero to make work. What I will say though, is that I think Luna Helm of the Dominator is pretty legitimate. Helm of the Dominator has good buildup in the laning stage. The headdress keeps you alive in the laning stage, even though it has gotten nerfed twice in a row. I think the crown buildup is good. It's a pretty cheap item overall. And also what I want to mention is if we look at Luna, she recently got buffed. Her backswing is better now, so it is easier to last hit with the hero. She's gotten consistently small stat buffs and, and changes over time, and her passive now gives base bonus damage, and Helm of the Dominator also gives base bonus damage 20%, meaning you give in an AoE 50% base bonus damage. 50%! You know, that's a very high number, guys. 50%, uh, that means for a hero that has 100 base damage, which isn't necessarily that high for certain heroes, you have 50 damage more. So maybe this hero will be picked as a position four that farms a little bit, but I think realistically what we're going to be seeing Luna as is either a mid laner in specific matchups where she can't get punished that hard because she can get punished hard due to her short range, or in the safe lane in either tri lanes, you know, that benefit from Lunar Blessing and death comps, right? Most importantly, I think we're gonna see death comps, Lycans and Beastmasters, where you sort of just group up, you amp everyone's base damage, you have like a giga attack speed, then you also have maybe like a drow mid. I know it sounds a bit crazy, but this is my speculation. You have some like Luna safe lane, Drow mid, Beastmaster top, let's say a, a tight hunter position four for armor reduction, just because we're spicing it up. And then for your position five hero, maybe maybe a Lich or an Ogre Magi. Ogre Magi sounds good. Why not an Ogre Magi? But in all seriousness, I think Helm of the Dominator Luna is fairly legitimate as even having a creep such as an Alpha Wolf allows you to give your team like 80% damage. Think about it. That's pretty cool. I think it's pretty cool. I don't know, give it a try. Just. Please don't AFK farm as an all flame Luna. Next up on the list is Phoenix, and I want to apologize, right? You know, I, I make mistakes, guys, and you got you you call me out on them in the comment sections a lot of time. I, I get it. I make mistakes. I appreciate your feedback, and yes, I made a mistake in a recent video. I did not read the change where at level 20, Phoenix now can use Sunray during his ultimate. So, you know, just putting that out there. Hey guys. I appreciate your feedback, and yes, I made a mistake. <laughs> but in all seriousness, I still think Phoenix is pretty good, and I really like the idea, similar to Necro's AoE damage, that Phoenix, having a lot of AoE damage, also gets a Vessel. Now that you do not have to buy Ags, in fact, I generally don't recommend you buy Ags, uh, I mean, it's not bad, I, I guess it makes your Egg take more hits, which is pretty good, and you could put people inside of it. I think having a Vessel and a Shiva's, as well as a potential Veil, is insane. It's an insane amount of damage. If you vessel someone and have the AoE regen reduction, the amount of damage you're gonna do in a fight is pretty damn crazy. Moving on to number six, we have a carry hero, and I've actually already seen this come into play, so I'm pretty convinced it's good. But yeah, I was watching a carry player recently. I think it was even in a pro match, and they bought a Scotty on Terribly. Now, don't rush it. I don't think you should buy a first item Scotty, as it now reduces healing and life steal, similar to Vessel, by 35%, which is pretty good. However, you can buy something like Treads with Wraith Bands and maybe a Wand, probably just Wraith Bands, into a Dragon Lance, maybe a Meta in that case, right? You probably want, you know, one or two different items for Scotty. Do not buy Scotty too early. It's not a good item to buy early. The buildup is garbage, right? Ultimate Orbs are just fairly mediocre. They just are. You can buy 10 Ironwood Branches, which is only 500 gold, which gives you the same amount of stats. And you could argue, well, Spade, <laughs> you can't put all the Iron Branches in your inventory. And that would be true. Uh, all I'm saying is that Ironwood branches are a lot more valuable per slot. Moving on though, I think TB with two major items such as a Dragonlance and a Manta and Discati is pretty good, especially against heroes that are relying on lifesteal or just regen in general. You can actually shut down the regen of a hero like Mars with, you know, a Vlad's or a Bristleback or something like that by buying a Scotty. It definitely helps out, and you can combine that with the Spirit Vessel from one of your teammates. Moving on, we have Clinks, And I want to say that, uh, you know, Clinks. I actually have a video on support clinks, and I think it's better now, right? He, his searing arrows actually deal 30 damage at level one now and scale all the way up to 60, which is pretty good for not that much mana. In fact, the mana is the same as it was in the past at level four. So yeah, I think clinks as a support is not bad. Uh, you know, don't kill me. I think it's okay. However, I do want to say that clinks mid is also good. I recommend you try out mid deso clinks with a lot of stats. Please do not buy brow boots 
into a desolator. That's really bad. It's really bad. I'm serious. It's really, really bad. You, you have like not that much health and like no attack speed. Just buy treads, a wand, a rate band, maybe two rate bands, then a deso. Then a deso. You buy the blightstone early too. Just don't rush. Next up, let's talk about Bristleback very, very quickly. Uh, I have a, a pretty old video on Bristleback now. I think it's like a month old, actually. Not that old. But yeah, if you want to learn about Bristle, I recommend you check that out. But going back to my point here, I think Bristle safe lane is good. All I recommend you do is rush a soul ring. I think ring of regen as a casual item in the laning stage is awesome for laning. Still really good in the Bristle, and the buildup is great in that regard, because you can buy that as a part of Sol Ring, even though Sol Ring did get a slight nerf in a recent patch, I believe it costs 50 more gold. But yeah, you buy a Sol Ring, then you can buy Phase Boots, or you can buy a Wand before the Phase Boots, as Wand is a very good item on Bristleback, especially against certain heroes. Then you buy a Vanguard or a Hood, depending on which is better for the game. And then I recommend if you bought a Vanguard first, then you buy a Hood next, then you basically interchange to two. All I'm saying is that these items make you extremely tanky and strong, and then after that, you buy a Lotus to purge things like Spirit Vessel, if that happens to be good for the game. Uh, all I'm saying is when you play safely in Bristleback, run at the enemy team, farm aggressively, do not farm your own jungle, please. You can make stacks into the early game and take them and like drag the camps together, as you'll see if you watch a lot of pro bristles. But once you get your key items, like your Vanguard and such, just go run around and run at people. And I think you're gonna do well. Number nine is Blademail Quap. And Blademail recently got nerfed by two int, but that's not that much. It's really not that much. It hurts a little bit but not that much. So Blame Out Quap is good. I think Quap is a pretty solid hero right now where if you get good at Quap, you can first pick the hero because she doesn't lose a lot of mid matchups, if any. And yeah, so it's Quap is just like a solid hero that kind of scales okay, right? You, you, you scale well enough if you go a scaling build, uh, you shove in waves well, you, you know, you did get a bit of a nerf with the spell amp not being attributed to int now, which I think hurt int heroes the most. I also discussed that on the Game Bleep website in my recent video. But overall, I think Blade Mel Quap is good. And if you're going to play Quap, Void Spirit, or Ember Spirit, I think they all still should be buying Blade Mel in, I'm going to say, a majority of the games. Not all, a majority. Even Vessel Quap is pretty good too, so you can keep that in mind. And finally, last on the list is Ursa. Now, the main thing I want to say about Ursa is probably actually something I didn't mention uh, recently. In fact, once again, I know you're going to kill me, but I did actually talk about this in full on the Game Leap website in the video that will come up. I'll move on though. Basically, Ursa is a hero that kills. Kill streaks are not punished anymore, right? They're 50% less gold and less XP now. So Ursa would get like three, four kills, because that's what Ursa often would do, especially if he has an Aegis, and then he would die and feed away a lot of gold, not be able to farm to come back into the game, and the enemy Naga Siren would run him over. But now you feed away a little bit of gold or a death, it's not the end of the world. Uh, it's not as bad at least. It's not nearly as bad. It's not even as close to as bad. And therefore, I think Ursa is doing quite well. In fact, he has a 53% win rate, uh, which I think is uh, very notable. He also does very well against a lot of the strength offlaners I think are generally popular right now, such as Mars, even Underlord with a high win rate. And therefore, I just think this hero is a bit overlooked. It gets overlooked a little bit, not always picked in the pro scene as they are much better at kiting it. But, you know, if you're a 2k, 3k, 4k MMR player, or even 1k or 5k or 6k, maybe 7k as well, I think Ursa is good. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. That's going to be the end of the video. Let me know which hero or build you like the most or, you know, that you plan on trying out. I'm personally a fan of all of them and plan on trying as many as I can out. And so, yeah, I'm excited to read what you guys have to say in the comment section down below. And uh, I, I'll see you in the next one after you like the video. <laughs> if you forgot, because some of you forget. See ya. Peace. And hey guys, remember, before you end this video, in the link down below, I've been playing a lot of live games where I talk about my thoughts in real time in the middle of a Dota match. So if you want to get in the head of a pro player, click the link down below to the Game Leap website. Super cheap right now, right? Like, and I'm doing this a ton. We all have time on our hands. I have time to make content. You guys probably have time to enjoy and learn Dota, get better at the game. So yeah, if, if that combo works for you, click the link down below and I'll see you there.